Okay, this is the P3 paper from October 2020. It's question number six, and if we take a look at it, we can see that this is a numerical methods question. We're going to be locating roots. We're going to be doing some fixed point iteration. And actually, at the start of the question, because one of the functions is an exponential there, we we're also going to do some work on exponentials. Quite a long question, so let's get started. We've got these two curves that meet in alpha and beta. That's going to be uh, for the rest of the question. But for part A, we can just focus on point P here. It says P lies on line C1 and has the coordinate, y-coordinate of 18. We want to work out the x-coordinate. That's dead straightforward. So let's make a start. Part A, y is equal to... 5e to the x minus 1 plus 3, and that's going to be equal to 18, and they want us to rearrange that. Uh, just being careful, they want it in this format here, so I'll come back to that at the end, but let's solve this. Just rearranging, take 3 from both sides, we're going to get 5e to the x minus 1 equals 15. Divide both sides by 5, we're going to get e to the x minus 1 is equal to 3 at this stage. If we log both sides, remember I work with exponentials and logs, they're inverses of each other. So if I log e to the x minus 1, I get x minus 1. So that's equal to log 3 there. Rearranging that, x is going to be log 3 plus 1. But here's the irritating little bit. That's not in the format that they want. They want it as just log k, log, log a value here. So what I've got to do... Again, using the idea that exponential and log up the inverses of each other is log 3 plus 1 is the same as log e. So a little bit of knowledge for you there. Once you've got it like that, then hopefully it's easy to see. The next step is I've got log of a plus log of b. Or using the log rules, that's log of a times b is going to give me log 3e there. <coughs> Excuse me. So that part A, a little bit of a stinger just at the end of it, but that's done. Let's have a look at the rest of the question. It says, they meet at alpha and beta. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Using a suitable interval and a suitable function that should be stated. So I need to state the function. They're not giving it to me. Show that uh, alpha is 1.134 to three decimal places. Right, I know what my game plan is is for this then. Uh, first of all, let's find this function, or let's state this function. So we're saying where the two graphs are equal to each other. So that's where the two functions, that one is equal to the other one. So all we need to do is to rearrange all this. I'm gonna take that over to the other side because my function fx should be equal to zero for when I'm using the numerical methods. So if I do that, I'm going to get 10 minus x squared minus 5e to the x minus 1 minus 3 equals naught. Okay, so I'm just taking all of that over to that side there and then just tidy that up. That's 7 minus x squared minus 5e to the x minus 1 equals naught. So the fx that I'll be using for my numerical methods is that function. Whoops. Is that function there. And it did say in the question that they wanted me to state the function that I'm going to be using. Okay, if we're doing one of these with the iterative, or sorry, with the numerical methods, where they're saying show that something is equal to 1.134, what I'm going to need to do, if I think my answer is 1.134, what I can do is I can show that if the value lies between 1.1345, which is the upper bound, and 1.1335, which would be the lower bound, for this value, if it's in here somewhere, then it doesn't matter how accurate I am. When I round it to three decimal places, 
it will have to round to 1.134 because it's going to be within that range there. Now that's a pretty standard technique um, which we will do. So this is part B. Continuing on, what I'm going to do is uh, quite quick because I want, I want to get through this. I'm just going to state 1.13 Excuse me, 335, and get the answer to that. 1.1345, and get the answer to that. And then we'll talk about the, the language that we'll use. So if I do it for 1.135 minus uh, 1.1335 squared minus 5 lots of... Now, I, I'm going overboard here. I don't think you necessarily need to write this down. Let's try and concentrate while I'm actually writing the values down. I'm explaining to them I'm doing that. I don't think you necessarily need to do that, but this is good for you guys so that you can see what I was doing. In an exam, I might not necessarily actually go through that process, but I've got plenty of time. I know my timings for the way that I do my exams, and I do have the luxury of spending a little bit extra just on this bit. I don't know whether this means I'm less likely to make a mistake when I'm doing it by writing these bits in, but I know what I'm looking for here. So when I actually get that, what I am looking for is there to be a change in sign from a negative to a positive or from a positive to a negative, because if there's a change in sign, then it's cross the axis so that there's a root line between it. Now, as I say, it's up to you how much of that work you do. It's absolutely imperative, though, that you make a statement. So I'm now going to say, and I stick with the same thing all the time, since there is a sign change, and fx is continuous, in the range, Therefore, there is a root alpha, which lies between 1.1345 and 1.1355. Therefore, alpha equals whatever it was that they asked us originally, 1.134 to three decimal places. Now, as I say, I think that this bit here, that's all really, really important to show the examiner that I actually understand what I'm doing. So for my students, I'm pretty I'm strict with this about making sure that they write, uh, let's just get rid of that, that they write this statement down, almost copied word for word, okay? So that, for me, means that the examiner will be convinced that I know what I'm doing as I'm going through and doing that part. So, another three marks there. And then the last part is iteration, isn't it? We've got an iterative formula here. X to the N plus one is equal to minus root seven, minus five E to the X N minus one. So the, the iterative formula is always gonna be quite complicated, but it's really just a matter of plugging values into your calculator. So it says, uh, let's just read it. We're finding beta, we're finding the other root here. Start with x1 equals minus 3. Find the value of x2. So, okay, I have to give that. And then find the value of beta, giving each answer to six decimal places. So when I repeat it, I've got to repeat it far enough so that the six decimal places... Well, let's talk about that in a second. Let's actually just get on and do it. So part C. Um, and again, I'll just show you the way that I... Uh, right on my working out here. So x to the n is equal to the square root of minus 7 minus 5e to the xn minus 1. And they're telling me that x1 is equal to minus 3. And they want me to say what x2 is. So x2, hopefully I don't need to explain this to you too much detail, is simply putting x1 in. So it's minus 7 minus 5 lots of, in this case, minus three, minus one there, and then working out what the answer is. So 
what I'm doing here is just showing that that value there is actually going in there in place of that. I only do that once, okay? You're not getting any extra marks for it, but what I do need to do is to take the value that I got and follow the instructions that the examiner gave me, which is they said we, that they wanted X2 to three decimal places, uh, sorry, to six decimal places. Okay, we know what the iterative formula is now. That's gonna go into there, I'll get a new value out. The new value goes in, I get a new value coming out. Well, you might have thought that I took a little bit of time over um, the previous part of the work. I'm not taking any time over this at all. All I'm gonna do, keep plugging it back into the calculator. Uh, you might use your aunt's function to set that up. I'll leave that for you to, uh, to do for yourselves. But what I would do is just now write down what I've got out each time. So it's minus um, 2.62053527 x4 plugging that back in gives me minus 2.62033528 I plug that back in again x5 works out to be minus 2.62033026 I could probably stop there to be honest with you but we can we can just do an extra one depends on how quickly you are at doing minus 2.62033296. And then we're just looking at where the change is happening. Okay, for all of these numbers, these are all, for example, minus 2.62 all the way through. But for this first one, we notice the change is happening in the fourth decimal place. So it goes from five to three. By the time we get down to the next one, we know that the change is the same up to 0. Uh, sorry, 2.62033. It's the five that changes to the zero there. So as I say, I was pretty safe at that stage, but I did, it doesn't take me long. So I just did one last one X6 there. And then I can say that beta is actually equal to minus 2.620. 330, that's to the six decimal places where I know these six decimal places are not going to move. If there's going to be any changes, it's going to be down there now. So I'm confident at this stage to then give that as my final answer for that question. So quite a bit of work involved in that one, but hopefully that all makes sense.